<sighs> so it's the last Sunday of 2013. Woo! Yay! It's the last Sunday of our of our quarter of a year theme since we only started in September. So it's uh, the theme for 2013 was Prove Me Now. And so for this since September, we've been proving that this infinite love intelligence of the universe, God, is more real to us than the chairs on which we're sitting. And this month, we've been on a pilgrimage of light to discover light as it's never shown up in our life before, that new Christ, Buddhic, Atman light being birthed within us. And so hopefully there's been some movement and shift in, in you this since September and especially since this month. And as we get ready, this is my favorite time of year, we're getting ready for a new year to set our intentions to become this new light, to allow this light to guide us into a life of change. And, it, and it's exciting. And at the same time, I recognize uh, it's very challenging. And I'm reminded of this. Um, I don't know if any one of you follow football but I happen to be paying attention. I don't actually watch the full games. <laughs> but I've been paying attention to the Dallas Cowboys, which happen, happens to have a star as their symbol. Because I went to high school. I knew in high school the coach who's now the coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Jason Garrett. My brother had gone to a private boys' school and introduced me a couple of times. And Jason was just the nicest guy. Always went out of his way, even though he was always center of attention. He always went out of his way to come over, talk to me, be friendly. And so that kindness has always stuck with me, that those little moments of kindness. So when he became coach of the Cowboys in 2010, I became aware of football a little bit more and was rooting for him. And what I recognize is that the Cowboys have had this pattern of whenever it came to be clinched games, they always lose. And so I was excited. Now Jason Garrett, he's very smart. He went to Princeton, had a uh, good football career, not a great one, but a good one up until then. And um, so I thought, oh, this is, we can break the pattern here. And, and I've been watching, and we're in the third year, and they haven't broken the pattern at all. And now it's a clincher game today, and it looks like they're going to lose to the Eagles because their star quarterback, who tends to lose in clincher games, got hurt, and their replacement quarterback... Yeah. <laughs> not too sad about this story. <laughs> so the clincher, the quarterback that's coming in, uh, also has a habit pattern of losing in clincher games. I'm like, of course they attracted him. So it's, it, what it tells me, we're laughing, but because he's someone I knew in high school and liked, I'm rooting for him to change. And so it's been sad. And and he, he gets eviscerated in the media the next day after games. How And I'm like, oh, that's just so mean. So it's not just that you get stuck in your habit patterns. Everyone loves to tell you how horrible you are. Cause, and I thought, wow, what if we had people commentating on how every time we didn't get past our goals? That would, how, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't Monday morning just be awful? <laughs> well, they planned and intended to do this and failed yet again. <laughs> so if it were easy, if changing our habit patterns were easy, we would do it. So... We begin with the recognition as we enter in 2014 that it's a challenge to change our habit patterns, but we have that desire. So how do we begin? I love Emma Curtis Hopkins. She's a pioneer of new thought. She was in the 1800s. She's considered the teacher of teachers. She taught uh, the Fillmores. The Fillmores were the founders of Unity School of, well, they're not a school, Unity Unity Movement Organization. And they're, they were teachers of Ernest Holmes, who started, started this organization, Centers for Spiritual Living. They were the teachers of the Brooks Sisters, who started Divine Science. So she was a teacher of many people who went on to start other organizations. A powerful woman. And her belief is that in order to create and affirm a new life, first you have to start with denials. And that's something we don't hear very much, that the denials create a space, create a vacuum to allow the new life to come forward. So if I just say God is good all of the time, God is my life is good all of the time, and I just keep saying that, but deep down I still really believe that there's a lot of bad in the world or there's a lot of bad in me, then that affirmation is sort of always fighting something else within me. But if we begin with the denial that there is no absence of good. That's one of she, she likes. There is no absence of good ever. Then we can start opening to, and then there's only good. There is no absence. There is no evil. There is no sin. Just start saying those denials and how much you actually believe. 
you know what, I do think there's evil. I do think there's bad. I do think there's something other than God in my life. So just by denying it starts waking us up. There's no evil. There's no bad. I just had an example of this yesterday. I went to Starbucks early in the morning, and I brought my computer, which I normally don't do. It's not part of my habit pattern. So when I left, I forgot my computer. I went home, and... <laughs> Well, I put it on the floor because I had stopped using it, and so I was done with it, so I forgot. And I, and I don't normally bring it, so I went home, and of course, I said, oh, I forgot my computer, and Jack's used to me forgetting things, so he's going, yeah, of course. And so I wanted to say, oh, you know, scattered brain, but I stopped myself. I said, no, there is no absence of good. There is no absence of good. There has to be good in this. So I drove back saying there is no absence of good. Only good is there. And so I went, I got my computer. It was right where I left it. Started walking out, and there, one of the Starbucks workers was now outside cleaning the windows. I had spoken to her earlier in the week, and she had been sharing a lot of stuff that was happening in her life. And I hadn't been able to ask her that morning because she had been behind the counter with a lot of other people. But when I went back to get my computer and she was outside washing the window, she was all by herself. And so we had this, so I asked her how she was doing, and she poured out her heart and was just grateful to have someone to share all the stuff that was happening in, her, in that moment. There is no absence of good when we choose to see with those eyes that there is only good. There is no evil. There is no sin. When we start to say that and allowing in that vacuum, Ernest Holmes said, God abhors a vacuum. It will come and fill itself up. But if there is no vacuum, those, those affirmations don't have the same amount of power. So affirmations still work, but what she's saying is that by creating that space, then we can turn and say the affirmation, God is infinitely good as my life. There's space for it now. I've created a space in my life for that new affirmation to pour forth. So we begin with saying what's not true. And often at the end of the year, we go to uh, burning bowl rituals, and we start with releasing that which no longer serves us in the, throughout the year. And we write it down and we burn it. So we release it. That's where that idea comes from, creating space, denial, release that which no longer serves. How many people are going to a burning bowl ceremony on the 31st? A few. They're, they're, oh, I'll tell you about them. They're really good. There's many of them, but yeah. They're really, they're, so often what they'll do is you do release, then you set intentions, write a letter to yourself, and they mail it, they mail it back to you at the end of the year. It's really cool. So we start with the denial, and then we go into... What's the vision? What, what's the vision? Hopefully, we caught a little bit of that vision this past month of something new that we want to birth into our life that has never been there before. This, I wanted to use the, the movie this week, A Knight's Tale. How many of you have ever seen the, Heath Ledger in The Knight's Tale? The kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not so many. It's a really fun movie. It's completely silly. It's, it's, a, it's a movie of the, in the Middle Ages, but they use sort of modern colloquial uh, colloquialisms, like, hello, you know, just things like that, and music from the modern day. So it's, it's sort of, it's just fun. So the, the movie begins with William, as, well, it doesn't, you see this in the flashback, he's a, he's a little boy, he's a Thatcher's son, he's a peasant in the Middle Ages, and a Thatcher's son becomes a Thatcher. But he sees this parade of knights, and he says, I want to be a knight. And they, there's a guy in the stockade next to him, turns to him and says, yeah, you'd have to change the stars for that to happen. And so that didn't stop the boy, changing the stars. And he started thinking, well, can I change the stars? <laughs> no limit to those possibilities. And so his dad heard his desire, and his dad knew he didn't have the ability to help him fulfill this intention. So his dad puts him in apprenticeship, with, not apprenticeship, because he, he was a peasant, but just said, well, you, you can at least serve a knight. You can't become a knight, but you can serve a knight. So William goes into the service of a knight, and as in service of the knight, he begins to joust and, um, and learns how to joust and sword fight. Now, what I love about this, before we go any further, is that he was willing to change his stars. He was willing to allow the stars to change. And I think that's a really important part on our spiritual journey because we find often... Well, how many people know your astrological sign? Most people. And most people, how many of you can tell me a little bit about your astrological sign? <laughs> so we, we, the astrological sign, the way Sri Yukteswarji, Yogananda's guru, explained, he believed that astrology had power to impact us. But he also said astrology 
It was just the way the stars that aligned with your karma, with your habit patterns as you were born into the earth. It's, not, it's neither good nor bad. It's just a reflection of the vibration at which you were vibrating when you were being birthed into form. It's not the ultimate power. There is that which created the stars, and we have to remember that. So even as we're on the spiritual path, one of the deni denials for me is I deny any power other than the power of first cause in my life. So I can maybe learn about myself through astrology. I can learn about myself through therapy. I can learn about myself through the Enneagram, through the Myers-Briggs, all these things that start telling me about my personality type, that tell me about... Where, why I am the way I am. There's genetics. I remember watching um, all those talk shows in the 80s, and they would have these reunions of twins. And it was always stunning to me that these twins who hadn't seen each other since birth would come together. These were identical twins. And they would talk. They'd have the same shampoo choices, the same toothpaste choices. They liked the same food. All these things that we think is so unique and that we've chosen, there's such a genetic component to it. Those genetic components could be past life propensities that they were birthed into, habit patterns that we were born into. Our family environment impacts us. Our culture impacts us. Our astrology impacts us. There's everything that impacts us that, that is why we show up the way we show up. And all of those things can be useful to help us understand where we are now. But they are not always useful in saying where we want to go to. Because where we want to go to is to break those karmic habit patterns, to, trans to transcend and go beyond them. That they are good up to a point, but they are limited. It's those karmic pro habit patterns, it's those stars that birthed us into form. They're so strong. Those subtle patterns are so strong that it birthed us into form. It put us that here. You're going to manifest these karmic habit patterns on earth. And in order to return to our heavenly nature, we need to transcend those habit patterns. And so even having the idea that William and this character to transcend his stars is huge. We can look at saying this is a quaint little movie about the Middle Ages and those peasants, they, didn't, they were stuck in their world, but we all are a little bit stuck in our world, and we're all here to transcend those habit patterns. And it is, just as I gave the example of the cowboys, it is so much harder to do. So for him to say that as a peasant child, that's a huge desire. So now he's a peasant helping with this knight. He ends up being the sword fighter and, and learning how to joust. But with no, I mean, he's a, he's a peasant. Still no chance of becoming a knight. But then there's this moment where his, his, the knight dies. And, in, and it's in the middle of a jousting competition. And he gets up and he says, I'm going to play this knight. I'm going to pretend I'm this knight and I'm going to show up. And, <clears throat> and he says, I've waited my whole life for this. I've waited my whole life for this. So what I get from that is when we set our intention to move our stars, we need to take action. So the action was he went and worked with the knight, still couldn't see how that was going to show up, was learning the skills. This happens in the beginning of the year. We set our intention for this new life. We've had this vision in the Christ light. It's been Christmas. It's the season of light. Hopefully we've seen that light that transcends our human habit patterns. We see that idea of first cause, the divine prototype. We've caught some sort of vision, and we want to carry it into 2014. Often we get discouraged if things don't change in the very first few months, but what we have to remember is those first few months are actually just the preparation. We have to take the action. We take the action steps, but we may not see the, the good until much later. So we, so we let go of our attachment to seeing the good we want, the result we want to see, and just say, I keep my eye on the vision, but I do the very next steps. So by doing the next steps, when that night died, he was prepared. He could go do the sword fight. He could go do the jousting because he was prepared, sort of. So he, he wins enough gold, just a little bit. Actually, silver. They won silver. And his companions were at this point ready to go home. They had had good in their life. They were happy to have a little bit of gold, and they could fill their stomachs up and be at home. And they were still within the, the parameters of what was familiar and comfortable, and they were happy. But William said, no, that's not enough. That was just a moment. I want to become a knight. Let's take this money, and rather than having it just sustain what we're comfortable with, rather just sustain our familiarity, let's push it to the next level. I want to pretend to be a knight until I become a knight. And they thought he was crazy, and they fought a little bit, and eventually they agreed. 
When we start pushing for those stars, for that beyond, it's going to make the people closest to us uncomfortable. Because in order for them to support us, their lives are going to be risked too. They're going to have to change a little bit. They can't support us unless they change a tiny bit. So the more, that's why that first part of just nurturing our own intention, so the beginning of the year, two or three months, just do the actions yourself. Because the moment you start making it public, you're going to start making the people around you uncomfortable, and you need to be strong in what you want and anchoring that. And as you're anchoring that and you start bringing the, that inner circle into your world, they're going to start shifting too. They might not like it, but part of them does because it's exciting to push past those borders. And so he does, and he even draws in um, uh, another misfit who's wandering the... He lost all his clothes gambling. Turns out to be Jeffrey Chaucer. <laughs> and so Jeffrey Chaucer writes him a fake patents, the paperwork. So he gets to enter all these tournaments as a pretend knight. Nobody knows that it's pretend. Only the inner circle knows that it's pretend. So it's fake it till you make it. So he's standing in this vision. He's saying, even though there's nothing about my reality in the past, I'm pretending that this is real. And I'm acting as if it is real. And so he did. He acted as if it was real. And of course, he, it's, a, it's a happy story. Everything is, works out. There are diff some difficulties along the way. And there are people who want to, there are times where they just say, stop, you're going to get hurt. Well, we're going to get hurt. Usually it's, there's a little self-centeredness there, too. <laughs> Please stop. But the last time they'd ask him to stop, he really was going to be imprisoned. They, when he, they found out who he was. And so they say, run, escape, stop this vision. And there gets to be that point. And I think that's the, that high point of when we really hit the edge of our habit pattern, where we really hit the edge of our stars, of our, those, that, that's not just our our habit pattern in the human body, but our subtle energy pattern, we've hit something so strong, and in order to get past it, we have to face death. There have been little mini deaths along the way, and I just keep saying yes. I keep going towards the vision, but then there's that really tough one where you really do have to face death. I remember, um, you know, when we have dreams, sometimes we fly in our dreams, and we're flying around. Well, I had this one dream where I was flying around, but I was flying up, and I was flying higher and higher, and I suddenly realized I was about to leave the Earth's atmosphere, and I was about to leave gravity. And that became so, I got so afraid of what was going to happen when I left gravity. It's like this thread, and I just went zoop right back into my body. I hit that edge, and I wasn't quite ready to take, because I didn't know what was going to happen. What happens if I go past gravity? That's what happens. We talk about death if it's, as it's easy, but it's really scary, because we don't know what's going to be on the other side. So every one of his friends, out of pure love for him, all of his support group said, run, stop, don't go any further, further. But he was so clear that he needed to live this vision, that life wasn't li worth living unless he was living for this vision. He was told his, his, his desires were too high. He aimed too high, and he said, I don't know any other way to aim. There's no other reason to be here other than to aim for the highest. So he went forward, he gets arrested, but when we step forward, there is no absence of good. When we step forward in our truth, there is no absence of good. And so we get help, divine help, from places we don't even expect. And in his case, Prince William, the royalty who he had had connection with earlier, comes and saves him and dubs him a real and authentic knight. And he wins the whole tournament and he gets the girl and everything. So <laughs> he becomes the knight. He changed his stars. And that's... The theme throughout the movie is, can he change his stars? And at the end is, yes, he can. And that's our message, is that, yes, we can change our stars. That our intentions for 2014, and I don't, it, sometimes what I see happening for all of us is that we're going to do this as a spiral. So every year to, uh, in December, we're going we're gonna to go on our pilgrimage of light and just go deeper and deeper and deeper because hopefully the desires that we have are... We have our human desires, but also there's that ultimate desire of just total enlightenment, that I hope we all have that of total freedom, of total unconditional love, that we have those desires that seem almost impossible to walk in the human body, to be, ha have the mind in us that was in Christ Jesus, to be the next Buddha, to be the next Krishna, to walk on that earth, to strive. And so that may not happen all in 2014. <laughs> But we spiral deeper and deeper as a community and, and individually to become this great light. So we, we start with 
denial? What isn't true? Go through in your life, what isn't true? Even though it seems true, the facts say this, what isn't true? And then we are, start saying, what is true? What is that vision I'm willing to say, I am willing to give my entire life for? And, and maybe start on that quietly in 2014. Maybe not tell the whole world. Or maybe you do. Maybe you tell it in a safe place, as he told his friends. You may share in a spiritual community. Here are my intentions for 2014. And then we travel that journey, and there's going to be no's along the way, things that are trying to stop you. And we allow our friends to support us during those times and saying, I'm feeling like I just want to quit. That's what we have community for. That's what we have friendship for, is to support us through those no's and just keep going towards that vision. And ultimately, we all are becoming every day, every month, and hopefully every year, more and more heaven on earth and that true and infinite blessing of the universe. <laughs>